Indigo here, and we are back at it again playing Dinkum. I must say that this game really sucked me in. I didn't think I would love it as much as I do, but there's just so much stuff that you do in this game that's like a dopamine hit, and I couldn't believe how like, before I knew it, it was like three hours to pass in real time. And I'm like, dang, I've been on this game all night. I need to get the heck out of here. But there's always like something I have to do next. There's always a goal I need to reach. And you know, if you're like me, you love your goals. You love your like, you know, little achievements and stuff. But in this video, there's one goal and that is to get to the deep mind because boy, is it like a pain to try to scour the surface for ores just to make anything. And honestly, I was struggling for a little while, but you know, there's, there's like a progression in this game that is easy enough to follow, but it can be pretty difficult if you're not used to like these survival crafting games where you gotta go find stuff, you gotta forge things, you gotta mine things, and you gotta make it into more things. <sighs> and the deep mind is one of those places where I could find all that stuff. And apparently there is the undergrowth, which we will have to explore that soon. We had made one stone furnace. I know that it would be more efficient to make multiple, but I kind of wasn't really thinking about that. So I just made one and sat there watching little bars pop out one at a time. But, you know, there's something satisfying about it, I think, no matter how inefficient it may be. We managed to wrestle up a handful of licenses just to get us started. It's nothing big, but you know, it's a good start. It's a good place to begin. Before we knew it, John liked us enough where he wanted to stay on the island and we were able to quickly put together all the materials so we could build his general goods store. We just needed a couple more tin sheets and we were on our way. It was a success. It would be constructed shortly. So we decided to go celebrate with John and uh, he seemed pretty happy about it. To commemorate this occasion, John wanted to eat some cooked croco meat. But, um, yeah, we don't interact with crocs right now, so that was going to be a big no from us. Sorry, bud. Instead, Stephen's bright idea to commemorate the occasion was to just sell John all of his bugs and take his money. But, you know, John, it's a win-win for everyone. He's just going to sell them as pets down in South City anyway. It was, it was a good sale. We could use that money somewhere else. The novelty of sleeping in a tent every night was starting to wane with uh, Stephen. And he found out that houses cost a lot of money and you got to pay up front. So we were just going to do that another time when we're not literally dirt poor. But our boy did have enough points to get a couple licenses. We got some for digging and some for farming, which go hand in hand, basically. We learned some cool stuff and some scarecrows that we don't have anything to make with them. But you know what? It's good to know it. It's good to have it while you have it. Now, John's request for croco meat had gotten Stephen thinking. If he's going to get croco meat, he has to hunt a croco, and in order to do that, he's going to need a spear. So he went out foraging, picking, mining, and we got some tin. We got some wood. And he's on his way, slowly but surely, to make a spear. A handy dandy spear. Something that he will cherish, something that he will eventually break because he uses it like crazy for hunting. And he has it to be cherished at length. He went to John to go and celebrate. And guess what happened? Oh my goodness. He got a lovely compliment about his orange t-shirt. He loves that orange t-shirt. John, you're so nice. So, so wholesome. We love you, John. You're great. After sleeping on it for a night, Stephen was just thinking about croco meat. And with his spear, he was hyped. And he went and found a croco and started a fight. He picked a fight with that croco because he's a true blue legend. With some 
agility, maneuverability, dexterity, all the skills you need to fight a croco. He took him on head to head, but not tooth to tooth. All right, calm down. Head to spear, specifically, with a little bit of go-getting attitude, a jump, a leap, a poke. The fight was long. The fight was fierce. But the croco was losing. And the spear was winning. And after a quick parry, Stephen had won the fight. He had gotten his croco meat. He even got croco teeth. Amazing. It felt like a good day. A victorious day. He had won against the croco. And now, if John wanted a snack, some croco meat... Stephen would be glad to share, because it would be a victory feast for them both. It was a good day.